Okay, let's see if the sound, I mean, if, if basically refreshing it helps at all. I mean, you never know. Turn it off, turn it back on again is, uh, no, I'm back. So sorry to keep you waiting. The boy was shipped in some boxes. What can I get for you to put aside? Information, what is it? that any better, I hope? Odd? Well, sir, not so much as you notice. You always notice, what if? Apothecaries are second to none for an ear to the ground. Any improvement at all there? Still low. Well, poop. That's pretty much all I can think of to do. I don't know if I should, I mean, because it sounds fine to me, and I don't know. I mean, I've checked every single thing that I have access to that I know of. <sighs> well... Should I go on or call my tech support and give up for the day? Well, let's do this. Let's go disable, enable, enable, disable, and see if that turning on. So sorry to keep you waiting. The boy was shipped in some boxes. What can I get for you to put aside? Okay, well. We'll just try and, and hopefully I'll uh, try the spatial sound when you right click volume. Right click here. Uh, Windows Sonic for headphones. I think that just does something to my listening. I don't know that that's anything else. Playback devices. Oh, that's up there. Uh, sounds. That didn't do anything at all. Uh, troubleshoot sound problems. Oh, they're not, that's not going to be any help. <laughs> it never is. But anyway, um, well, we tried. I'll just try and make sure I crank it really loud when we when I play the final version. How about? <laughs> I mean, I could always just do this and hope that it don't blow my ears out in the process. So sorry to keep you waiting. The boy was shipped in some boxes. What can I get for you to put aside? I mean, I just have to remember to turn it all back before I. Well, sir, not so much as you notice. You always <laughs> noticed what if. Pocketries are second to none for an ear to the ground. So, um, does that help at all? Does that make it louder so you can hear a little bit better? Even if it's kind of goofy on my end, at least maybe it makes it better for you guys for now. Does that help? I don't know. You've noticed. Just what it, just what it. Well, I mean, this, this is, yeah, uh, well, yeah, that was the problem I was thinking it might have, is that it might be more distorted. Um, well, maybe if I just take it to a little bit higher, it'll at least be a little bit better. But he said, I note, you noticed, not you notice, which I'm trying to correct. This is one of the two things. Uh, yeah. So it's probably... It just sounds a little off as all, so I'm going to... Now, a duh sound is one that I can actually isolate and blank out. Nope, oh, it's still there. Because plosives tend to be very small, like... Like, uh, t or something, and you can usually pull them out if you have to. See, I can get, oh, yeah, no, I understand. I just, it's like, who wants to sit here and watch me be frustrated with the sound problems all night, though, no matter what. So, better if we can just move forward. I've turned them up a little bit, so hopefully they're not going to get completely distorted. Ah! 
I'll make them 10 and we'll see if that helps at all without doing too much distortion. But here's the tr part where I'm going to have to try and be tricky. Apocatheries. I might be able to fix this because it is a very percussive word. I'm going to be very, very tricky if I can. Come on. Hmm, didn't quite work. <laughs> well, I'm going to mark that spot and to the ground. What I'm <laughs> I'm copying the the from later and trying to superimpose it and see if I can make apothecaries. Not quite. Dang it. Uh this uh this is the a label track. To create a label track, you just, it's control B. Uh, if you're in a track, if you hit control B, it'll give you a little cursor prompt here and you can write whatever you want. If I'm just trying to mark where I'm leaving off, I'll just hit it and leave it to where it is so that I, I just, it's there. Well, that carries um what i'm gonna do i'm gonna see if any of the versions of apothecary can be manhandled into into being functional <sighs> Maybe that as a single one so i have to go back up into the older file and find all of them this is the right line, isn't it? Now these are very quiet. Don't worry about that. I haven't volumed them up or anything yet. I'm just trying to see if I can trick any of these into being the right word. <laughs> because, you know, apothecaries it could be separated out enough that I could conceivably... Um, alter the the order of the syllables if I was lucky not necessarily gonna happen but I can at least try and the more distinct the syllables are You get to a point where you can't hear the right word anymore. Okay, that's still Okay, just a second. So what I need to do is split it here if I'm incredibly lucky. It's not going to come out sounding right, but it's easier than getting a retake on something that's this old, probably. And, and it's not impossible to make it work. I'm fading in and out. Um, yeah, I know. You get to a point you say a word enough to... No. Uh, 
it's it's a terrible word. Um, I don't want to leave it in wrong because it sounds really bad. I mean, honestly, it does. This is it's not like this is a character who would mess up a word. So I'm gonna actually have to ask for a retake on this. It's just gonna have to happen um, on this line, and I'm gonna leave this to market. <laughs> I had to think there while I Apocatheries, Apocatheries. There there you go. There's a new band name. It's the Apocatherium. We've got Apocatheri Apocatheris to list uh, something. Uh I need uh, No. Sorry, I'm making a note on the other computer to so that I actually what I should do is get right in there and uh, drop a line to him. But I'm I'm just gonna highlight it in the script and I'll get back to him later. Um, at least I know that the actor is still around. I've been on touch with him on Facebook, so it's not like I can't get it. Stop that. And just a second. If I don't make a note, I'll forget. So at least I've got it highlighted in the script, so I'll remember to ask him to do that again. So silly. Okay. Let's just get on with the rest of it. Sometimes you can get just stuck in minutia and realize that no, it's it's just going to be easier to start again from scratch. Sometimes, you know, you, know you just you just get to a point where stop. You get to a point where it, it can't be fixed. It's just going to have to either be got, gotten around or retaken. What do you know about grinders in general? You seen another one behind me back? <laughs> now what do you know about grinders in general? You seen another one behind me back? Okay, I like that inflection, but I like the first one. I love the idea of apothecaries as, you know, a source of information about the supernatural. Apothecaries by the way, is is basically you know the old school of uh, uh, pharmacies, except you know it's it's where you get the it's it's where they you know they they made up remedies and things in the past, and they seem to be the ones who would know about stuff like if there was something weird going on, you know people would be coming to them for some kind of remedy, presumably. And so the idea of Gerald as having a, a network of apothecaries that he talks to throughout the the city would be perfectly reasonable. And also newsboys, because newsboys would probably know whatever is going on. I think there's a newsboy in another scene down the, down the, the uh, script a little ways. I'm just pulling up the volumes now to even them out as I go, because I, it was easier to do that while I'm talking then listen to things. <laughs> and yeah, that, no, I don't want to do that quite that much. Let's go there. Anyway, um moving on. Next line. So I sort of picture him as having a a network of informants. <laughs> put it together. Hey, uh, Robin says, ladies and gentlemen, put it together for the apothecaries and the bedpans. <laughs> Great band name. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oops. Ow. So. Each man knows his own district, though I don't make personal calls very often. Each man knows his own district, though I don't make personal calls very often. Each man knows his own district, though I don't make personal calls very often. Okay, definitely the second one. 
and well you could have cut that out before you put it in my ear <laughs> actually I think I want to uh, I'm gonna volume up this whole track a bit just to make it because I am gonna have to anyway and it's easier to do a certain amount of it with brute force than having to do it individually well I think that might help it. at least brings it up a little bit so uh, and what do you know about grinding? whoops I already did that line well then I do like to smash there's been a bit of arguing going around judging from the way planters have been tying up the shelves but nothing too rum for this time of year planters it's not planters I know I'm a special. There's a bit of bit of a I know I'm a special. <laughs> Not Poe in the bedpans. There's a bit of bit of an argue going around. Judging from the way plasters have been flying off the shelves, but not too rum for this time of year. Well that's better, but he stutters it a few times. Sometimes you gotta just put them together. Well then, I know I'm a special. There's been a bit of argue. Judging from the way plasters have been flying off the shelves, but nothing too wrong for this time of year. Let's see. There's been a bit of an ague. There's a bit of, bit of an argue going around. I think I like the second take on most of that. Let's see how that ends up sounding. I know I was special. There's been a bit of argue going around, judging from the way plasters have been flying off the shelves, but nothing too wrong for this time of year. So, that's a pretty basic line, but we've got a couple of flaws in here. Uh, first off, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and volume that right to the top, and then bring it down with my pop mute. I love pop mute. But let's put this up all the way across the screen. First off, I got a little noise here that I'm going to blank out. I know I was special. <laughs> There's been a bit of argue going around. Should sound more like ague, I think, not argue, but I'm then close enough. We'll pretend he's got an accent. Judging from the way plat But this P, he's been popping all the way through, so I've got to fix it. Now, I'm going to take the whole sound. Plaster and just run a high pass filter on it first. So that straightens out a lot of that, but it's not perfect. But I'm going to take and whenever you're in doubt about how something goes together, you can fade part out and fade part in. I'm going to run the high pass on this again, and then I'm going to fade it out and see how that sounds. Just to make sure it doesn't have a rough edge between the the, the extra high passed p and the rest of the word. The way plasters have been flying off the shelves, but nothing too wrong for this time of year. Do you hear how that, because you can always kind of see the, the, the pop because it'll be very jaggedy and w much wider spaced jags than what you get on on the rate on the normal sound yep yep that's glenn and <laughs> hello ironstone yes uh glenn's been in so many of my shows he's he's really there's a little bit of a pop here too he's got such a deep voice but he also has a tendency to get loud and close to the mic a bit which, you know, everybody's got their ways of doing things. But that'll straighten that out a bit. So. But it's the little spot things that, that like that that make something sound a little bit more professional. You can tell him he's internet famous. I will do that. Oh, but, it, you know, it's... I mean, he's starred in, for instance, uh, he's, he's been, he's in my, my Lovecraft five and the Dunwich horror and <laughs> all those. So 
Let's see. Uh, eh, that conveys what I want. <laughs> it's like, hmm, I've got to pick between all the different hmms to see which is a good hmm. And uh, if you're just joining us, Ironstone, apparently the volume is a little quiet, and I have I, we went round and round trying to get it up to where it should be and it's sadly I've failed so I'm doing my best to make sure that I do something over here I've uh, that's why I've got the gain up really high so you got a little bit more volume coming through um hmm and let me volume up some of what's coming so we can hear it actually that's not bad There's been a bit of argue going again. There's been a bit of aju going around. Aju. <sighs> bit of aju. The a sound is more appropriate, but it's not aju. It's ague or ague. I think ague. Not. But I might take that. Let's see. Let's see how sneaky. There's been a bit of argue. Because it makes it sound like argue going around, and I don't want that because that's confusing. And sometimes, you know, you have to try different pronunciations because um, it's hard to know what the writer or director is expecting, and it's also hard to know sometimes what's going to be right for the accent. So let's see how this sounds. There's been a bit of age you going on. Ha 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 ha! Ha ha ha! I am the master! There's been a bit of age you going on. Judging from the way plasters have been flying off the shelves. <laughs> some things you can mix and some things you can't. Some things are, are more portable in pieces than others. But I do a lot of... Um, Judges from... This is just a retake of that. Um, I do a lot of <laughs> witchcraft. <laughs> She's a witch. <laughs> I'll turn you into a newt. <laughs> but, um, some parts of words you can cobble together. Some parts don't work no matter what you do. But I, that was one place that I was willing to try. And at least it's not in the pocket there. <laughs> <laughs> but I do I do way more than a duck so I'm fine um, I weigh rather more than a flock of ducks that's part of the job like anything else Again, I know it is you that's part of the job like anything else no, it is you. That's part of me job, just like anything else. That's part of me job, like anything else. Uh, I like the second take. And... <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, that one. I, I, you know, I remember... <laughs> <laughs> oh no, she's gonna talk about way back when again. No, um, I remember for I don't know, I think it was sometime in the uh early 80s for my birthday party. We went to a video store that was like downtown because there was only like two we could get to and rented a VHS player and 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 it was like seven dollars per tape to rent <laughs> and and we rented and my mom let me pick two tapes and I picked Monty Python and the Holy Grail and that was the first time I saw it <laughs> so oh I feel old some days all right Like 
like that one. And this scene will make a lot more sense when I play it straight through for you than if we're just hearing all these little bits and pieces of words. It will, I promise. Okay. Blackluster eye, drooping whiskers, pain is pain. You got the dose of the dreaded on we. Uh, let's see. Blackluster eye, drooping side whiskers, pain is pain. You got a dose of the dreaded on we. I like the first one best. Uh, let's see. The Dennis Miller School of. <laughs> well, you know, I've seen it a couple of times since then. <laughs> and, uh, admittedly. But yeah, no, I, well, I have, I used to do this stupid human trick. Basically, I would go see movies and then I would recite them to the kids I babysat because I, I wouldn't, you know, I'm not claiming I could be word for word, but I remembered it scene for scene and much of the lines for, for movies, no matter what. And it was just, they loved it. I'd be like, I went and saw a movie. They're like, oh my God, you know, cause yeah, this was one of those times when, well, you know, I mean, even, you know, the blockbuster weekend, even things like seeing a movie, I mean, they, nobody actually, unless they hang out at a lot of really obscure film festivals, has the, the urge, the urge to see a movie because they know if they don't see it now, they may never see it. I mean, I know that sounds sounds really weird but it's true you know that was something that was that was why you wanted to go out to the theater to see things because if you, you there was no there was no guarantee it was ever going to come on tv there was no guarantee it was ever you know you, you didn't assume that you'd just be able to see it later and that's really weird to most people nowadays <laughs> oh my god you just you reciting the entire dialogue of a new hope now that's the real one right i mean the original i know that sounds weird for me to ask but i'm just like you know i it's, it's to me it'll always just be star wars and all the others can just suck it but um the uh yeah so yeah good for you <laughs> i don't know how he managed to pop we but well let's take this up a bit okay uh let's see if i managed to take all the pops out of this scene well, only with people who like the ones that followed. <laughs> Blackluster eye, drooping side whiskers. Pain is pain. You got a dose of the dreaded ennui. <laughs> He's got the ennui. <laughs> All right, let's see. That line is done. Let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm actually, I mean, it's so weird. I call my, I, I enjoy things while I'm watching them, but I'm not like a massive fan. <laughs> That's too fakey. Um, I, I like them when I'm watching them, but a lot of times I just don't go out of my way for sci-fi much because so often it drives me crazy. Though I can watch, I can watch old school original series Trek forever. I still love me some old school Captain I Kirk. I mean your boy. I mean your boy. I mean your boy. I want to make sure this line is clear rather than necessarily in the right accent. So. 
uh, I'm choosing this last one because it is the clearest. There's times when you have to choose clarity over necessarily authenticity. I need your bar. And is this more laughter? Yes, thank you. I understand. But, um, that's one thing that so many times I do this when I'm doing narration and audiobooks too, is if, if using a proper accent would be confusing to the listener, I will not. I mean, I'll drop it back to something else, you know, because the the listener is only getting what you say and they may not understand it i understand unlike him i understand i understand mm. i understand i guess that one and um and so you know it's just clarity and making sure it's understandable is more important than authenticity sometimes uh because you don't want to you don't want to lose or confuse the audience you never want to lose or confuse the audience i mean and in theory with something i wrote i could just you know if, if i do the line if i wrote it i can change it so it's not confusing if i need to but uh you know if i'm doing somebody else's book obviously i don't have that option you're itching for a fight and nothing has come up you're itching for a fight and nothing's come up. Again. You're itching for a fight and nothing's come up. Uh. You're itching for a fight and nothing's come up. Again. You're itching for a fight and nothing's come up. Yeah, I think I'll stick to that first one. Um, and that is almost certainly a cough. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's true. You know, it's it's nice seeing that, and I. I did like I got dragged off to uh not the last one or the one before it but the most recent newest beginning <laughs> I should keep track it's just part of it is I'm so put off by the rabid fandom I mean I have if anybody wants to challenge my my fan cred you know, it's like, oh, you can't be a fan if you don't know. I'm like, dude, I stood in line for three hours for it in 1974. I had the toys. I've been reading comics since they were 25 cents and even cheaper than that. You know, don't even challenge me when I was a fan when you were not even a sperm. And what but... <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, hey, I gave Anne McCaffrey two of my beaded dragons. It's like, tell me that I'm not a sci-fi fan. Okay, let's see how this sounds. What course of treatment do you suggest being the expert in all? Okay, I didn't quite get that perfectly. When, when I pull two lines together, oh, <laughs> well, there's that too. Yes, anyone who had cast doubt on my fan cred has not listened to my tone didactics. Here's a tip. I just pulled it together. I'm going to undo it so you can see where I clipped it together. I didn't quite get it right. Rather than trying to get in there and fiddle it some more, I'll undo it, change my parameters a little bit and do it again and see if it flows better. It's easier that way because then you know that you're fixing one side or the other and not just jumbling up everything in between. 
I hope that makes sense. And what course of treatment do you suggest? The Still sounds a little janky. I think I need to go this way just to scosh. And what course of treatment do you suggest, being the expert in all There we go. I had written it as what sort of course of treatment, but I think but I think it sounds better just as what course of treatment. Which is one reason I pulled two different lines together for that. And then we're almost done. One more line here, and then we can see how it all sounds together. So oh, he took it several times. Eh, da, 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 da. Enjoy it while you can. Never last. Before you know it, some wicked great heel will hug up to the potato chips and such and such, and you'll be longing for the fleas. Are you speaking English, Glenn? Are you speaking English? Let's try it. Well, you can. Never lasts. Before you know it, some wicked great heel will hold up out of tents or some such, and you'll be logging for the free of these games. That one, at least, I can understand. <laughs> Again, you got to balance the accent with the clarity some days. I think I'm just going to stick with that one. So... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I long ago uh, kind of switched my loyalty over to horror from sci-fi. I like sci-fi, but so many times it just, it, 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 I don't know. It focuses too much on some parts and not on others or something, maybe. Raise that up. Bring some of these up a little skoosh. Okay. And where is this? Oh, you should listen to the guy from the Starship Sofa podcast when he gets excited. Uh oh. <laughs> Good or bad. <laughs> I think I've listened to it at some point. I'm so bad because I used to listen to more podcasts because I used to have a lot of free time. And now, of course, without, it's like I listen to myself talk all the time if I have a listening time. Uh. Oh. <laughs> so he shouts or something. He speaks in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, that's actually a perfectly reasonable way to describe it for some people. Oh, excellent. <laughs> okay. Super. I'm pretty good with a Scottish accent. I mean, with uh, understanding it, even when it is very thick. I like... Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that... Uh, that's okay. You go on back and I'll be right. Sorry, I was about to play the whole thing and I should have said that before I started it. Let's go. And what may I get? Oh, your lordship. You go on back and I'll be right along. Good. There's some sound in here. I don't know who's scratching, but somebody is. I'm just going to blanket going both ways. Da, 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 room for sound effects. So sorry to keep you waiting. The boy was shifting some boxes. What can I get for you today, sir? Information, Watty. Anything odd? Well, sir, not so much as you notice. Again, I've got a little sound here to get rid of. Odd? Well, sir, not so much as. Oh. <laughs> odd? Well, sir, not so much as you notice. You always noticed, Watty. Apothecaries are second to none for an ear to the ground. Yeah, there's the line I have to replace. Get rid of that. None for an ear to the ground. And what do you know about grinders in general? You seen another one behind me back? Each man knows his own district, though I don't make personal calls very often. Shorten that up a little smoke. Make personal calls <laughs> very often. I know I was mm. Stop that. <laughs> I know I was special. There's been a bit of egg you go on, Hara. 
judging from the way plasters have been playing off the shelves, but nothing too wrong for this time of year. Hmm. I know it is, you. That's part of me job, like anything else. What? Black luster eye. Droop and side whiskers. Plain as plain. You got a dose of the dreaded on... Plain as plain. You got a dose of the dreaded on... <laughs> and you're bored. I understand. You're itching for a fight and nothing's come up. And... Just a second, I'll bring that together. And you're bored. I understand. You're itching for a fight and nothing's come up. And what course of treatment do you suggest, being the expert and all? Enjoy it while you can. Never lasts. Before you know it, some wicked great heel will hold up out of the Thames or some such, and you'll be logging for the free and easy days. Okay. I did hear a pop in here that I'm going to have to address. a high pass filter on it so it doesn't I mean, you're bored. there we go so anyway um there's a there's all the lines at least and i suppose i should wait till tomorrow to put in the sound effects and hopefully magically the sound will have recovered for whatever reason it's giving me trouble on today i suppose i could shut the whole computer down and back on between now and then, I don't mean right now, but that way at least, <laughs> that way at least, um, yeah, it'll, I'll, I'll put my money where my mouth is as, you know, that fixes things. There's a little bit of movement in this scene, but it is mostly a talking scene, but I am going to move them from an outer room into a back room. So coming up with a sound... I'm thinking the apothecary might have a big old, like, clock. I know I was talking about sounds to identify things, and, I mean, it's this is another thing that is, is a weird thing um, from past days to today, is that we sit here and everybody has their phone, which has a clock. You know, back in the day, you know, if, you know, back in the day, I talk like I'm 80 years old, but, you know, until literally like the last 15 years, stores had clocks in them and many stores had clocks in the windows or outside because it attracted business. Because if somebody needed to check the time, they would come over to look and then they'd see what was in the window and they'd buy it. And it's something that's easy to forget because nowadays nobody looks at anything except their phone. <laughs> but... So I'm thinking for a store like this, um, you know, having a big old grandfather clock sort of out in the main area. And then when he, they go through a door into the back area, it'll fade. They'll still hear it, but it'll fade out. I mean, it'll, it'll go to a background rumble. And I think that's not a bad idea. I'm going to do that next, tomorrow. Um, we'll see if we can at least try not to have sound issues tomorrow. And, uh, let's see, I guess that will be it. Are you guys, uh, to build a fire by Jack London? No, I haven't. I haven't, I've read several Jack Londons, but I haven't, ex you know, gone into his stuff in huge depth. I got, um, talked into reading A Thousand Deaths by, uh, Jesse at SFF Audio, I mean, to recording it. And that was a pretty cool story. And I mean, I've liked all the Jack London I've read. Don't get me wrong. And I liked, Goliath is a weird ass story. If you haven't listened to, if you, if you haven't read it or listened to my recording of it, give it a shot sometime. Cause it is a really interesting attempt to sort of justify, um, a, uh, I, I will. I was actually just downloading a bunch of, uh, short story collections and Jack London's on my list to pick up at some point. But, um, Goliath is, is an interesting concept of how you could create utopia. And the sad part is that of course it's horrifically misguided. It's not Goliath. It's like Goliath without the T is how it's actually spelled. It's Goliath. And, um, which 
is real interesting and I don't know because it's basically the story I'd actually just posted it to YouTube today um, on the YouTube channel and but it's it's in the RSS feed and everything it's uh, it's basically about a guy who blackmails the world into a sort of communist utopia and Jack London was very socialist communist and um, and you know the idea of and part of some of his ideas are lovely you know basically the idea that once everything is automated all people don't have to work and can just get on with the business of like making art and designing new machines and whatever they want to do you know okay great you know and the idea that everyone should have whatever they need yeah i'm fine with that the problem is that he thinks that would solve all the world's problems and it's not going to solve the problems of things like you know oh two guys want to date the same girl yeah white fang and um uh call of the wild call of the wild was jack london wasn't it i'd have to look it up to be sure i i think we had to read Kavik the wolf dog or something i think that was him too when i was in school and <laughs> but he, the thing i like about jack london and I, I, my favorite story i think is um the the house of mapui that's my favorite story by him so far that i've read um which i i do want to do a reading of at some point i just don't know quite where i would put it because <laughs> it's not really sci-fi or horror or anything except adventure it's one of the south sea stories and um but it's very exciting it, it fits in with my tendency to like stubborn bitchy old ladies because <laughs> it's about this this native who is a pearl diver who finds a black pearl and sells it for way too cheap and then gets like cussed out by his wife and mother-in-law who want him to build a house they have this exact description of what house they want and and then this storm comes up over the island and I, the description of the storm is awesome i mean that's why i like jack london his prose is so dynamic especially when you compare it to lovecraft who was totally his contemporary i mean even after london and yet london writes like a modern writer while oh yeah crumping the devil um or or even the rookie i have a my old lady in there you know and i do love my my old ladies um but in this the the mother-in-law uh basically there's the this this monsoon or whatever it is in the in the ocean comes across the island and it's like breaking off trees and people are just being flung into the ocean and the old lady ends up um <laughs> yes yes i i i do love that one but the the, the old lady or the, the mother-in-law i mean she could be not that old who knows but anyway she ends up on one of the outlying uh like sandbars or coral reefs or something a tiny little island place where there's not much there but she lands there with the body of the dude who bought the pearl so she she steals she takes the pearl back because he's dead and then she manages to like make rope out of her own hair and make a raft and get back even though she looks like this complete you know monster by the time she gets back and it was like yeah you go <laughs> anyway i just like that story but like i said london just writes very dynamically and you know lovecraft by comparison writes so passively it's it's almost like they're writing in different eras even though london was writing before lovecraft it's so funny i mean just different styles of writing so anyway <laughs> uh i've just been downloading like i said a bunch of short story collections from project gutenberg picking up some ambrose beers who i don't think i've covered much and uh and some even the hd wells and mark twain i mean i i don't know why i've never gotten into mark twain for um oh you never realized what <laughs> uh sorry is that a uh, it's, 
Yes, we, we've been, people have been citing their favorite lines of crumping the devil in case you're entering this discussion late. I try to, I, I try to make sure I, I uh, translate over for later watchers who can't see my chat window. But, uh, well, I know, yeah, he was. Uh, that's be part of the reason it, he doesn't feel as antique is because um because his dynamic writing style i mean um oh what's the story uh a thousand deaths i'm pretty sure came out in the 1800s uh there was a story in 1899 that he published so he was publishing in 1899 and you know Lovecraft you know first published in okay he was 1897 I guess they were contemporary for the early stuff but Lovecraft really was published later into the 1900s he, he wrote these are the ones he wrote that he tended to hide because they weren't very good but anyway, so close enough. Oh, the elf. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the notorious Elton John line. I am so bad. Um, hey. No. <laughs> uh, the Jack London? Yeah, I think it's because, you know, it's his stuff is still kind of pushed on kids and stuff and we think that kids aren't don't read old stuff i don't know maybe that's maybe that's just me um i just recorded a short story of all things by alexandra dumas pair <laughs> that means father there were two dumases and uh and uh to do that i uh it was a short story called solange which i've wanted to do at some point <laughs> yeah i i well i i told you that she was based on a real person loosely a friend of mine who i only ever met through email from england and who had mentioned who, who was just a very cussy person and inspired me to write that story <laughs> when she mentioned that she was actually trying to reconnect with a biker gang to beat up her daughter's abusive husband i was like yeah there's a story in that Right now, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, finishing off a couple more stories. I do have another one with crazy elderly people in it, and that's they're not based on anybody in particular, but it's one that I really want to finish because I think it's going to. It, I, I'm trying to pick like the best six scripts that are gonna make me really want to revitalize 19 Nocturne if I can and some of them are really good if I can just finish them I might end up reading them here who knows <laughs> you get all the sneak previews if you hang out with the cool kids so yeah well some of them some of them can be creepy instead but you never know I had a I have a you know sometimes it's it's more really sad doesn't always doesn't always get good but anyway sorry I had a friend last night who was telling me about when her father was going through late stage Alzheimer's and that was very depressing so yeah we'll have fun we'll 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 all be old someday and we all hope that <laughs> I I came up with this line for I gotta remember to write it down too because I was just reminded of it for the the one it's it's basically there's a an old folks home and a couple of the old folks in it and this new administrator is taking over and is saying you know don't don't let them get around quite so much because um the movie neighbors no i haven't is that new or is it uh is that a comedy or is it a I think I might have seen an ad for a comedy, but that was probably a while ago. Anyway, um, in this case, the the new administrator is like, 
oh no, we don't want them getting around quite so much, too much liability. Besides, who cares if they're getting exercise? They're all going to die anyway. And the nurse is like, you should be more careful. Someday you're going to be one of these old people. He's like, no, I plan to die young. You know, I'm not, I'm not ever going to get to this point. This is just solidifying my idea that I just, I'm going to go screaming early, leave a good looking corpse or something. Uh, oh, no, that's a very, yeah. Huh. I'll keep an eye out for that. Yeah, I was thinking of something. I was probably thinking of some dreadful thing like the anything anything with um, Ron Burgundy in it or something. You know, can't remember an actor's name, but you know who I mean. <laughs> that guy <laughs> with the face. You know. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to I am going to sign off now and we'll do sound effects on this scene tomorrow. And uh Oh, okay, then I was thinking of a comedy. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Yeah, just drop me a line. And uh I don't know. I just, uh, <laughs> which one's awful, Rogan or Burgundy? <laughs> that guy with the face. <laughs> Uh, there's so many actors that I can only take in small doses and sometimes they're okay if they're in a piece where they're not the center of attention but oh my gosh it's just like um you know it's sad I'm only coming up with the characters now yeah Will Ferrell that's the one I mean, I can stand him if he's not the center of the movie but he just drives me crazy and the other one is um Zoolander, Ben Stiller, who when when <laughs> when when he's the the only center of a movie, I just don't care for him. And then, but I do like him in things where he's part of an ensemble, and it's not that he's not, you know, because it's not writing on him. It's just like how Ben Affleck, you know, he's fine in character parts, but you put him in something where he's supposed to be a a lead. And hold the hold a story together and suddenly he's wooden and that's why he makes a fine Batman because the costume plays the role but um oh I don't think in Walter Mitty I don't think I've seen that but um no no I will argue I quite liked him in Mystery Men and I liked him in Tropic Thunder and in both of those cases he's in an ensemble He's not central. And I also did not mind him as the villain in Dodgeball. But Dodgeball is one of those guilty pleasures that nobody admits to actually liking. I liked Michael Keaton's Batman. I really did. I haven't seen Walter Mitty. But I mean, I saw the original, but I haven't seen. I wouldn't go watch a Ben Stiller version of it. Yeah, Mystery Men was fine. And, and I mean, putting him in something with people who can... Who can ego well in dodgeball he is just this cheesy villain and it actually works really well and i also kind of liked zoolander i i didn't ever see zoolander too but zoolander falls into my two dumb guys movies and i do like for some reason i've got this whole set of two dumb guys movies that i yeah god knows why exactly haddock god knows why but i do i mean for you know the for me the <laughs> If you can dodge a ball, you read you can dodge a ball. <laughs> it was just so over the top stupid. I I I mean and but at the same time I I don't like dumb and dumber. That's too dumb for me, but I like movies like um Strange Brew, uh Wayne's World, uh uh Ready to Rumble is one of my favorite stupid comedies ever. So, I mean, I can hardly judge, but I think it partly has to do with whether the characters are sympathetic, whether I like them or whether they're just too annoyingly stupid. And because like Dumb and Dumber, I never managed to get into and Dude, Where's My Car? I just wanted to punch them in the head. So anyway, <laughs> 
And Airheads is a Three Dumb Guys movie and is actually very entertaining. <laughs> King Me? Oh, yes. <laughs> I will rule you. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, Ready to Rumble. Okay, Strange Brew is Bob and Doug McKenzie from SCTV. They had a t they had a movie. And it's basically Hamlet as a comedy. And it is quite entertaining in this strange Canadian way. It's from like 84. And Ready to Rumble is from what? The late 90s? Or maybe the early 2000s? And is about these two bozos, um, David Arquette and the guy whose name I can never remember, who go to see their favorite WWE wrestling champion and they believe wrestling is real and he uh gets not only defeated but like completely demolished that night and they're they freak out and they have this horrible accident on the way home and decide that it's their destiny to go and help him reclaim his crown and they totally believe all the PR to the point where they show up at his parents' house and, and they're like, and, 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 uh, and his mom's like, um, yes, they flipped the poop truck. <laughs> That's a horrible accident in anybody's book. But they go to his mom's house and his mom and dad are like, he's an idiot. He should have stayed in college. He might've been a doctor. And the dad's like, no. And the mom's like, all right, he might have been an ambulance driver. <laughs> and, and then the guys are sitting there going, no, I'll have you know, according to the official biography, he worked two jobs while putting himself through college after you died. <laughs> pointing at the dad. <laughs> and it's just like, I, okay, to support you after you died. And I'm just like, oh gosh. David Arquette is particularly good at being a dumb guy. I mean, let's face it. That's kind of his entire, his entire career. But he does it well. And I quite liked the way this movie was. It was very cute. I have, you know, I even liked Role Models. It was actually a surprisingly good comedy, considering it looked like it was going to be awful. But, uh, yeah, right to their face he says that. You're like, what? But yeah, even when even when Jimmy the King, their favorite wrestler, points out to them that it's just it's just a show. We're like clowns, like dancing clowns. You know, I've been fired. They're like, no, no, wrestling's real. We gotta get you back into the ring. You know, and they finally convince him by saying, you know, wouldn't you like a chance to beat up your old boss? And he's like, well, yeah, that would be satisfying. <laughs> And his whole shtick, Jimmy the King's shtick, is like half King Arthur, half Elvis. Which is just disturbing to start with. <laughs> but and he's played by Oliver Platt. And it's also got Rose McGowan in it and who else? Um, I mean, it has like real pro wrestlers in it. Uh, like Sting and Dam Diamond Dallas Page. And th the only reason I know their names is because they're in this movie. And so I like obscure movies. I'm, I'm, I love finding weird ass stuff that I can, that I can share with all my friends. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I think they were pointing out, they were, they were making a point of the fact we, but with Oliver Platt being, on the heavy side they that that wrestling isn't you know that, that it's so choreographed and so uh you know false in the sense of it's not a competition that somebody like that could be a champion against all these far more fit guys because it's fixed unquote because it's scripted you know, I mean, the, wrestling is not real in the sense, I mean, pro wrestling is not real in the sense that it's not a competition. It's not a surprise who the winner is because it's scripted. 
but it's real in the sense that it is actually very strenuous physical activity and they do beat the crap out of each other to a degree not to the degree we think it is because they're professionals i i keep telling people you know if you want to tell your teenagers about porn this is not a digression oddly enough you need to point out to your, your kids that that porn is to normal sex like WWE is to high school wrestling. It involves trained professionals, costumes, and and positions and acts that are not actual that are faked and and shouldn't just be done by people who aren't professionals. <laughs> I mean in other words, in other words, what you're seeing on the screen that ain't real. Oh no, your worldview is shattered. Oh, your 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 tender your tender British sensibilities. I'm so sorry. No sex, please. We're British. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, <laughs> no wrestling, please. We're British. <laughs> well, you know, it's a show, and it is it is still real in the sense that it is athletic. It's just you know. It's not, it's not a contest. And it was wonder, it was really fun watching Glow. Speaking of Netflix series, this Glow was so good. That's a set in the 80s also about the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. The original Glow was nowhere near as good as the TV show, show was. Oh, I've seen Wizard of Speed and Time a long time ago. Too far back to remember much about it. But uh, I, I remember watching the short film it was based on too. But, um, but Glow was really fun dealing with wrestlers and talking about, you know, trying to, to come up with different personas for the different wrestlers and stuff. It's just, they all happen to be female and, you know, trying to figure out a way to sell themselves in that way. It was, the, the series is really good. Oh, I really enjoyed it. It takes a little bit to get into it maybe because... You know, it, it, they're, they, they're setting up a lot of characters all at once. And, um, but it, it, it gets so good once you get a handle on who everybody is. And, and a lot of them are kind of unlikable until you can place them, until you start to understand them. But um, one of the bits I loved was one of the women is coming from, a, she used to be in a soap opera until she gave it up to have a baby. And also because... You know, whenever she tried to make, tr tr tried to ask for better parts for her character, they'd put her in a coma in the show so that she couldn't do anything. And, you know, and suddenly she, they want to have her come in as a, as their headliner because she's got some kind of fame and, and she just isn't getting it yet. And so they take her to a men's oh, WWF at the time wrestling show and and halfway through the show is the the women who are with her are like oh and that's that's uh whatever his name is you know buck stallion he's the he's the everyday hero and his enemy is big bucks and 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 big bucks stole his girlfriend and brainwashed her and and all of a sudden the the soap opera girl is like oh my god this is a soap opera i get it now and there it was just like that moment of revelation and suddenly it all made sense because <laughs> they do call them rope operas i mean at least a lot of people do but yeah now it was glow is really fun and uh it's soap operas for men but <laughs> anyway i really should go i've been gibbering along and uh yeah, that was really fun. My other favorite wrestling movie is a film noir from the 40s, so it's not like I do a lot of wrestling movies, but it's called Night in the City, and it was really good with Richard Widmark. And Herbert Lom, if you know who that is, back when he was really young, before he was Inspector Clouseau's boss. If you even know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I watch a lot of movies that are vastly older than myself. I'm not that old. 
but uh, I do plan to be a crazy old lady someday, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> okay, I'm out. Have a good night, CL, tomorrow when I put some sound effects to this. This should be quick, and we'll move on to something else after that. What was I thinking I needed to do? Oh, I was thinking maybe if I have a little time at the end of an episode and don't run late like this, I might do... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, Fish Called Wanda. I remember that one. <laughs> yes. And, uh, yeah, Kevin Klein, always fun. And night-night. Bye-bye. See you guys all again.